Hello and welcome back to another exciting episode of Economic Lessons from a YouTube Know-It-All. Today's lesson will be on fungibility and liquidity and how just because you know how to use one thing doesn't mean that you know how to use another. In this example, just because I know how to swing a hammer it doesn't mean I know anything about a hatchet, but the wound is healing nicely after a week. So until I can make amends for this video, because I think I have an ethical ob obligation to uphold in so far as I shouldn't be passing on misinformation, and I don't like this. I don't like it, how it, it works at all. I, I completely, I don't want to remove the video, but this should be light or wood at the most. I don't like it having a heavy handle. It doesn't feel right, and I just don't think that I know enough about hatchets to be making videos on them at this point. So excuse me for that. It's easy to get caught up in believing that you have expertise when you really don't just because you have an audience. I have to split wood every day to keep it warm in here. So I've been doing it for a while now, but it doesn't mean that by any stretch I have actual experience worth a squirt. But anyhow, here's this my current state of the, the current state of my shop. It's coming along. Lots of work. It is now starting to take shape as an actual shop, but there's a lighting problem. Ah, why even bother listing all the problems? I have so many problems I don't even know where to begin. Today's project is um, well, these little dovetails are, it's nothing, it's not really fancy, it's just, look, that's all it is. It's to make two pieces one piece, it's to lengthen them. They're just for simple light trees. I'm making clusters where I can of three lights on PVC pipes. I drill a hole in the support rod and just attach it to the ceiling. My plan is to put in, I don't know, maybe four or five clusters like that, and then I'll probably at some point update this to LED. And then I'll have various under lighting and down lighting, because lighting is 90% of video presentation for making a shop look good. Right now it's kind of dingy and visual appeal matters. It brings in the numbers. My other project today is Freedom Cleat. Yeah, that's a joke. Sorry, this is a bad joke. If you're old enough to remember, following the 9-11 airplane attacks in the early 2000s, they, they had this just outrageous um, propaganda campaign to rename everything French to freedom uh, because France didn't support our war effort and we were invading Iraq, I believe it was. And... Um, yeah, so there was just this outrageous, let's change french fries to freedom fries. <laughs> so I'm making a French cleat system here. I don't think I'm going to record any of it because I, I, I really want to focus on getting it done. But what I have here is a piece of what's called AC plywood, three quarter inch. It's wonderful stuff here. This is what it looks like. Seven layer three quarter inch, wonderful stuff. Super strong, super stable. I'm going to rip it into six inch, six inch strips and then those six inch strips I will set my table saw to 45 degrees and, and cut them in half. So I will get two French cleat hangers out of each six inch strip. And that wall is about eight feet and I'm gonna do the whole way up to the top. And that will really alleviate some of this clutter problem. It's difficult to find a supplier for this AC plywood. A, oh, vice in the back. There's still some getting used to the shop. Everything's where I don't, I don't know where anything is. It's, it's so confusing. You, every, the simplest tool, like I've been looking for a pipe cutter for two weeks. Uh, AC plywood. The grading system works as follows. 
A being like, you know, you got an A on a test, that's good. C being, eh. well, this plywood has C grade on the back side and A grade on the top side. But the C isn't so bad. It's, it's totally within the realm of sanding and filling. But the, the plywood itself is very stable. It's a wonderful product. If you can find it, use it. It's 50 bucks a sheet and it's difficult to find a supplier. But if you have access to this product, I cannot recommend it enough for building things. So what else? This is kind of a just off the cuff vlog sort of video. Somebody asked about this. I actually get frequent questions about this. It's great because it's brass and copper so it helps diffuse heat. And so you can set it on something without risking burning it. A heat gun needs a stand. It's just a, it's an old valve, a shower valve. And I soldered some elbows to it for the nice little stand. I don't know what to recommend if you can't find the valve, but people keep asking me to get a better look at it, so there it is. Turns out, speaking of my own personal ignorance and limitations, this is not a wood burner at all. It's actually a coal boiler. And I intend to get rid of it because I need a, I need a wood burner. It's too difficult to run. It doesn't it doesn't get enough air. Ugh. And it's a smoky mess when you open it up. You have to shut this every time you want to feed a log into it so that smoke doesn't billow out the top of it. And it's hard to keep it, oh, its appetite is insatiable. And the amount of heat that I get from it is not worth the investment. I just need to, trend, I just need to change it to a wood burner. I'm not going to use a coal burner. It, I don't want to give you my argument, I just don't want to use it. One thing that's wonderful about it is that it weighs a, probably a ton which is an incredible mass of, well, heat, steel, and it, it holds heat. It holds heat for a very long time. As a matter of fact, if I stop working in here around 6 o'clock, I come in the next morning, and this is an insulated garage, but it's like something like 1,500 feet. It's like something like 23 feet wide, and it's 67 feet long so it's big well it will still be warm the next morning this will be not warm to the touch but it will feel room temperature even when it's 30 degrees outside so that's impressive to be able to build a storehouse of heat that lasts all night long that's important for me because I have liquid storage expensive chemicals Wood glue, which if you don't know, wood glue can't freeze, it'll ruin it. And caulkings and various other things that I just don't want frozen. And of course your batteries and your lawn tractors and such. So speaking of skills and ineptitudes again, that seems to be the theme here. I intend to gain skill with a hatchet. But there are channels out there of people who really do possess skills with such things. And one I would I will recommend to you I've been watching lately is Skill Cult. Go check him out. Uh, my man is brilliant. He has a lot of ideas and an incredible amount of experience. Well, I've been splitting wood a lot. Me and Matt. Who's Matt? And so I am quickly learning. It's difficult. It takes its toll on you. Uh, it's especially tough for me because I have bad el I have a bad elbow. My ring injury has never fully healed. It's a it's tendonitis. It's too much use for too long. Yeah, back to my point. Matt was complaining about a sore neck. <laughs> so I, I took a light piece of PVC pipe. It was a 
cut off piece of sewer pipe and I heated it up with a heat gun and wrapped it around there and then taped it with duct tape. It's not the most beautiful solution, but I'm a noob and I have to keep from splitting an axe handle. I can't break my axe handle. I don't have time to repair that. So the skill cult video that I was referencing, he wraps um, rawhide around his because he likes this he likes to be able to have a perfect transition so that it doesn't bother his hand. He he wants to be able to maintain a fluidity of motion while he's he's using the tool, which makes sense. I mean, ergonomics are it, once you become adept at to at using a tool, you want it to be as effortless as possible. You're a well-oiled machine with practice. Well, somewhere in this mess, I have a box of rawhide, and since Mac, Matt's necktie needs to be replaced, I was thinking of doing some experiments. I don't want to make another axe video just because, like I said about the ethical obligation, I don't want to pretend as though I have knowledge to pass on when I don't actually have knowledge in that domain. Uh, it's really foolish to believe that just because I know how to do one thing that I also know how to do an that that means that I also know how to do another but this but my experiment will be as such I want to wrap rawhide around it but I want to soak the rawhide in linseed oil and then see if it it hardens so I'm going to do an experiment just on a piece of it if I can find it right now and I'll include you in that, but then I have to go because I need to get to my freedom cleat <laughs> and I have a lot of other things to go do. Now I get the idea that this is to rawhide what particle board is to plywood. But correct me if I'm wrong, nevertheless I think it will, it seems thirsty, and I think it will absorb linseed oil and then I can wrap it like a tape around the handle and hopefully it will harden. Another potential option would be to epoxy soak it and then I know it will get hardened, hard and then I could probably even sand it so that it's, it approximates the shape that I want on the axe handle. More natural rawhide is harder to come by, and I'm not about to kill a go kill a deer simply to fix my axe. That is way too much work. So, notice how on the top of the can, linseed oil, boiled linseed oil, has a tendency to polymerize. It becomes plastic-like, like a thick polyurethane. So my hope is that I can impregnate the leather with it and then it will get hard. I just noticed this a few minutes ago. I really must have bopped it hard there. I don't know what I hit, but I'm in the middle of sharpening it anyways. I'm not doubling down on this, how to improve this crappy ax project. It's just that it's one step away from going in the garbage, so I may as well run my experiments on it. Well, the camera just ate that shot, but it cuts like you would expect it to. But you know what? We can cut it into even thinner strips. If that approach is good for an S-Wing handle, then it's good enough for what we're doing here. You have to be careful about doing these crappy temporary projects though that you don't intend to last forever because they have a funny habit of sticking around forever. The big washer is there for a reason. I bet you figured it out by now. Yeah, that pretty much is reacting the way I would have expected it to. I want to make sure that it really, really gets in there. And of course, waste not, want not. Matt always enjoys a good coat. 
Do you find it a little bit creepy that I refer to my axe by name? <laughs> That's fine. I'm sure there's an advocacy group for those of you who are bothered by such such trivialities. Maybe there's a Reddit thread. You can go there and complain along with the demographic that can't stand that I don't wear gloves. So is this going to work? Make your predictions now. Do I think it's going to work? Um, no. <laughs> I mean, it's possible, but that's the name of the game. Most everything that I attempt is a failure. And then every once in a while, you crack it out of the park <laughs> and you get a stupid video with a million hits. I liked it better when you acted professional. The old pocket videos were much better. Well, you can go back and watch those if you'd like. I'll pull this copper bandage off tomorrow. It's just to hold it in place until this starts to firm up. Well, at least in theory. Oh, let's try this again. Man, it is so uncomfortable to work in an unfamiliar shop where you don't know where everything is. It's just... You know, my last shop, it was a mess and it was way too small. But boy, I knew where everything was. And it was very comfortable to work with, or work on something there. At least until I had to break down a 4 by 8 sheet of plywood and there was no room anywhere to move. But, just in general, the... Oh wow, didn't expect that. I have a spare. In general, the... Uh, The, how can I describe it? The, the effortlessness of moving around a familiar environment so that every move that you make is deliberate and towards some end goal or state. There's a certain comfort in exercising that you know, remember Bertrand Russell wrote about work. I, it was a little essay. I, I think it might have been at the end of on happiness. He wrote a uh, he wrote a book about capturing happiness, and I think it might have been one of the final chapters in that book. And he wrote about work, about the secret to finding happiness in work in finding satisfaction in your work. And part of the formula is that your work has to be productive and you have to be exercising a skill while doing it. And if it meets that those criteria, then it lends itself to to hap to adding net happiness to your life. You know, the book wasn't so much about, like, read this. It wasn't like a self-help book in so far as that you read this and you'll be cured. You'll become happy all the time and you'll walk around in a delirious state of blissful ignorance. No, it was nothing like that. It was more like Russell was an extremely rational person and he knew that the world was cruel and it's easy to become cynical. So it's not so much... The book wasn't so much about becoming happy as it was about overcoming a, a, the natural tendency to slip into unhappiness. And because ultimately we're all worms meet and Russell and anybody with a brain knows this. So the onus is on you to squeeze out some meaning to your life. And if that's in 
modifying crappy axes or watching videos about those and laughing that you're not the one doing it. Hey, good for you. But for my part, I'm content just to tinker. <laughs> so cast your vote. Do you think it's going to work? Uh, we will find out in three seconds. One, two, no. <laughs> After four days, it's about as hard and dry as yesterday's spaghetti. But on the bright side, the freedom cleat turned out great. More on that next time.